Welcome to Love, Light, and Wisdom with your host, Shoshana. Love, Light, and Wisdom inspires listeners to tune into their authentic selves and create a happier and healthier life. Take control and experience true happiness. So please, welcome the host of Love, Light, and Wisdom, Shoshana. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Love, Light, and Wisdom. I'm your hostess, Shoshana Aberbach, and you're watching live on Bold Brave TV. For those of you who are wondering what happened last week, I woke up and I was not feeling well, unfortunately, but thank God I'm better now. And I would also uh, like to welcome new listeners, um, old listeners, or and today we have a wonderful show. We're going to talk more about energy healing and the human energy field, the aura. We have loads of tips and techniques to help you feel your optimal self, because that's what our show is about. <clears throat> <clears throat> we inspire you to tune into your authentic self and create a happier, healthier life. I just want to also mention the advice or perspectives presented on this show are not meant to be a substitute for professional medical or mental health care and are not connected to my professional licenses. Please use your own discretion. And I do not have any business relationships with the products nor services mentioned outside of my own services. So again, today we're going to talk about the uh, continuation of what is energy, putting that in user friendly uh, terms. It's very difficult to put something that's in right brain, a right brain concept into left brain language and back it up with research. But that's what we're going to do today to make it easier for you to understand and access and use to help you have a happier, healthier life. And how we're going to, and we're also going to discuss how this impacts a person's health, well-being, and relationships. So again, for those of you who don't know me or you do know me already a little bit, I'd like to share some of my credentials. I'm a licensed social worker and music therapist in New York State. And I also practice energy and spiritual healing, body code, the emotion code, remote spirit release, certified case manager, certified dementia professional, and a host of other things. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And I'd like to uh, just give you a little taste of what I do. Uh, some of my services that I offer include energy and spiritual healing, intuitive readings. I'm a certified body code and emotion code practitioner, which is a modality that identifies and releases trapped emotions and traumas for healing emotional and physical pain. I'm a licensed music therapist in New York State, specializing adults in geriatrics. I'm also a social worker and provide counseling services or coaching and feel free to look at my website, healingnotes.com, for more services and information. Okay, so now I'd like to go to a technique just to get us all settled in. Everybody's so busy, so let's just take a few deep breaths together, and you can try this technique at home um, in between shows as well when you just need a few seconds to center yourself. Okay, so let's take some deep breaths. It's free and beneficial. <clears throat> Not everybody can breathe on their own. So thank you, God, that I can and we can. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And take two more deep breaths. And just be here in your chair. Just take a moment and focus and i'd like you to put your left hand on your heart rate your energy mood and your level from zero to ten. Zero is low but then we wouldn't be here today right and 10 is i have a lot of energy <clears throat> and just notice what you're feeling witness observe 
and pretend now to breathe in and out of your heart, even though the breath is coming in and out of your nose or your mouth. And I invite you to think of something or someone that makes you feel happy, like a special person or a place that you visit, or maybe you're listening to your favorite song and feel that happy feeling in your heart and then shine it to someone or some place or something special in the world that needs some extra love. Share that. As a gift, send this energy to someone you care about. They'll get it across the plains. That's P-L-A-N-E-S. And if you like, take the next challenge and send this as a gift to someone you do not resonate with, who could use some extra love. And then I invite you again to send it to yourself and come back to center and rate your energy again and your mood. And what do you notice now, just from those, that minute or two of being in your heart? By the way, if there's anything you'd like to share, please feel, feel, feel free to write uh, comments in the chat or give us a call on our live telephone line. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, so let's move on. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, um, this is an amazing experiment. I'm sorry, I don't know the source of it, um, but there is a magnetic field around this flower that was measured by uh, with a microphone and I'm wondering if we could play this video. Okay, we're not hearing it. Um, okay, so what this narrator is saying, he has a device here and he hooked it up near the flower and the flower has an energy field around it. And then there's a bee that comes near the flower and they have the opposite energy field. One is positively charged, one is negatively charged. So that's very interesting how they attract each other. And then once the bee leaves, the energy field of the flower changes so that another bee won't go there, I guess, till it makes some more pollen. So that's something I found very interesting. Hope that you would too. Okay. Um, so I just want to mention, you know, our show is about energy healing. I wanted to share a personal story with you before we go on to some cool information. So last week I couldn't do the show because I wasn't feeling well, unfortunately. I had a sore throat and I thought I had an upper respiratory infection. So how does a healer or a healing practitioner heal herself? Well, God heals first of all. So what did I, with all my armamentarium, how did I do that besides prayer, of course? <clears throat> so I talked to my throat. It's called dialoguing with the symptom. And I just put my hand over my throat. Okay, throat, what is it you want to tell me? Or maybe there are some trapped emotions and recent stressors. I also, and there were, I also examined what I call the symbolic or metaphysical body part. So a throat has to deal with expressing or holding. Ah, I can't talk. I can't express myself. Or there's some kind of inhibition there or fear of speaking up. So I, or maybe not being heard. So there's a sense of futility about speaking up and expressing rather than imploding. But when we hold in those emotions, it creates stress in our body and our mind, uh, which often appear later on as pain, whether that's emotional, physical pain. Now, I'm not saying go vent and scream at your friend, your partner, whomever. 
um, maybe do that in a in a secluded place, or maybe figure it out what needs to be expressed and wait till you calm down and in your more of your thinking brain rather than in your feeling brain, which is from the back of the head, and then have your heart to heart talk. <clears throat> so I figured out um, what was bothering me, um, feeling invisible, unimportant, I didn't matter. Um, so I identified repressed emotions about a very painful experience I had, and also the recent death of one of my close friends and mentors. So this was a challenge for me to confront rather than repress the pain. And of course, no one wants to feel pain. So we have all these defense mechanisms and ways of repress, suppress, uh, deny, rationalize, because that's our number one thing is to protect the ego, the healthy ego that wants to be whole. But things happen in life and we need to deal with them. So how we deal with them depends on the outcome. So what I chose to do is confront these uncomfortable feelings. And it wasn't easy. Uh, on the other hand, it's not easy having a very sore throat either. So I was at a choice point and I made the choice to get my courage together and dive in. And I came out whole. And as you can hear, my throat, thank God, is much better. So how did I do that? I did some emotion code sessions on myself. I am a certified practitioner of the emotion code. I did some self-care is my body's way of saying stop and rest, take care of yourself. I took some homeopathic remedies. I rested and I, I protected myself by being more discriminating about what and whom I allow into my life. I had to take a good look at that it's about setting boundaries. I also did some journaling about my angry feelings. And once you get started, it just comes out. So and at the end, I did feel clearer. I felt cleaner and I felt physically and emotionally better. And yes, healing practitioners and therapists and helping people also have angry and hurt feelings. That is a part of the human experience. But how we perceive them and handle them is what makes the difference in the outcome. Again, some people choose to repress and suppress the pain. They may check out with depression, denial, doing drugs, uh, alcohol as an escape. Because again, who wants to feel pain? But the consequences of the person who does that is perpetuating the pain or the problem instead of the solution or resolution. And although these feelings, um, although these feelings are uncomfortable, they choose, a person can choose to see them as opportunities and challenges for growth and holding. It took a lot of courage for me just to own and recognize those feelings, yet to keep them inside of me was literally making me sick. So again, I mustered my courage as much as I could. And like, you know, you go into the swimming pool or the hot tub and you just like a little bit, little bit, as much as you can handle, you pause until you get used to it. And then you go in a little deeper. So again, the outcome for me was more energy, more balance, feeling relieved little by little of some excess and really uncomfortable baggage. And we all have it creating more room for joy and being authentic about my feelings, which are my truth. So, and that's what our show is about. It's giving you the tools, the love, the light, and the wisdom for you to do that bravely and come out hopefully smiling on the other side. It takes a lot of courage to confront and blast away, but 
the other choice is to be sick and be miserable and unhappy. So I bless you with making good choices and having a lot of courage. And we'll be back after this commercial break to talk about some techniques and tips to help you do that. This is Shoshana Averbach, your hostess on Love, Light, and Wisdom. And you're watching me live on Bold Brave TV. See you in a few minutes after this commercial break. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back, everybody, to Love, Light, and Wisdom. I'm your hostess, Shoshana Aberbach. And you're watching us live on Bold Brave TV. I'd like to share some comments from a show we did on January 29th. Um, Shalom Shoshana. Shalom in Hebrew means hello, goodbye, and peace. Again, the talk was very useful to me. I made a note of confidence, appreciation, love, and courage. The part about vital energy reminded me of what we studied this week in the book of Proverbs about sources of life. Thank you. And one other comment, uh, you are covering very important topics here and I appreciate your sharing. And I invite you to share also in the comments, either on the live show or on the platforms on which you're watching, such as YouTube or our call-in number. So let's move forward and find out some more cool information about scientific proof of energy and amazement about the wisdom of the creator's creations. So this is the heart's intelligence. This is from an organization called HeartMath, which also has that shift and shine technique that we did in the beginning of the program. So heartmath.org teaches people about living in their heart and conducts research. They posit that there is a feedback loop between the earth and all humans and each person, meaning you and me and everyone else in the world affects the field, the energy field. They also have scientific research going on called a Global Coherence Monitoring System with 14 devices, locations with devices that measure the geomagnetic field, which corresponds to the heart rate. And scientific research also shows that patients entrained with each other's heart rhythms, although they could be on opposite sides of the world. So let's take a look more about 
let's do a little review of what is energy and some really cool stuff. Okay. This is also from heart math and it shows here heart rhythm patterns. On the left, you see patterns of people whose heart rates uh, were what they call incoherent. Uh, they were feeling uh, frustration, anxiety, worry, and irritation. So just note how jagged the lines are and irregular. Now on the right side, we see people who are feeling coherent emotions, confidence, appreciation, love and courage. And look how regular and evenly spaced that heart rhythm is. So when you're feeling one way or the other, unconsciously or unknowingly, you affect other people around you as well as yourself. This is a slide of Kirlian photography in the energy field. So you see here on the bottom, a key and a leaf, as well as hands. And so even inanimate objects also have an energy field around them. Kirlian photography was developed by a Russian scientist in the 1930s and shows energy fields around objects as well as the human body. Kirlian photography on these slides also shows you the difference, the dramatic difference between a cooked and a raw tomato, it got a little cut off there, cooked broccoli and raw broccoli, and cooked meat and medium rare meat, cooked medium rare meat and raw meat. So you see the energy that's in raw foods. I mean, we do need to cook the foods and sometimes to eat it, but that's why some people are in favor of a raw foods diet because there's more energy in the food. Let's also review what is the morphogenetic field? How does energy get transferred? How is it that I'm here and maybe you're across the Atlantic or Pacific and we can feel, we can actually pick up each other's energy signals through this antenna. It's called the morphogenetic field where, and this was discovered by Dr. Rupert Sheldrake, a biochemist in the 1970s. And it explains the energetic connection and transfer of information across space and time. So for example, you could be on the bus walking down the street and you turn because you feel somebody's thinking about you. Okay, that's through the morphogenetic field. Okay, let's learn some more about the morphogenetic field. Um, this could explain how people energetically and spiritually attract each other. And, you know, maybe you're thinking about a friend and the friend calls you and says, I was just thinking about you. You were picking up his or her signals through the morphogenetic field. All right, let's learn some more. I'm just doing a little quick energy review here. Emotional contagion is another way that we pick up other people's signals. And this was done as a research study in the workplaces where people were hopefully thinking more positively and it resulted in more job satisfaction, teamwork, reduced absenteeism and reduced emotional burnout. So you have more influence perhaps than you think. All right, let's move on. Plants also feel energy. The Secret Life of Plants uh, tells about a polygraph instructor in the 1960s who hooked up just as a, a fun, he thought it would be a fun thing to do. Uh, he hooked up his lie detector to the plant and discovered that the plant registered uh, in a graph form on the polygraph machine. And also he tried to hook up the plant to uh, classical music and the 
plants grew towards this musical speakers and then he put on rock music and i'm not saying there's nothing wrong with rock music but the plants i guess they didn't like the beatles or you know, uh, they grew away in the opposite direction so plants also pick up vibrations so if you're you have a plant that's on the way out maybe play some classical music or talk to it there's a real science behind that okay what else do we know about energy here so everything is energy and every ev energy is everything and we can raise the vibration of the people and places we encounter just by thinking positively all right let's learn some more about energy even our thoughts and words are energy forms abracadabra in the aramaic language means i create as i speak so I'm creating my reality with my words. And again, for those of you who are new here, um, you can review these slides. For those of you who are with our last show, I'm just doing a little review. So our words create our reality. Please use them wisely. All right, what else? Our thoughts also influence water. Dr. Emoto is a Japanese scientist, uh, took some water and uh, put it in a Petri dish. And then he had people think, uh, you know, project certain thoughts such as love, hate, or he also played different types of music because uh, water picks up vibrations. Then he froze the Petri dishes and the water formed crystals look here at the beautifully and symmetrically shaped crystals with positive emotions such as love and thank you peace or even different selections of music as contrasted with thoughts such as i will kill you uh, fujiwara before and after prayer fujiwara was a city in japan i believe that was affected by the nuclear fallout after uh, at the end of world war ii so even our thoughts influence water this is another proof scientifically how we are more powerful our thoughts are more powerful than we imagine okay what else Unconditional positive regard was a term that Carl Rogers, who developed client-centered therapy and psychology, uh, had for his patients. So he um, had uh, posited that a clinician should have unconditional positive regard for a client, even if the client is in a disharmonious relationship or doing things that are not in his or her highest and best interest, we still, like a loving parent, have unconditional positive regard. And those are the thoughts that we project towards the other person, the client, and those are the thoughts with their little antenna called the vagus nerve that they pick up. And that is very important element in the therapeutic relationship not only a therapeutic relationship, but also in other human relationships. Okay, what else can we learn about energy? The power of positive thinking and health. Endorphins give you a free boost of health for your immune system and keep your aura strong and healthy. Smiling uses 17 muscles, whereas frowning uses 34. So don't work so hard. There's also a Yiddish saying, Tracht good, vet sein good. Think good and it will be good with God's help. We also looked at the contagion effect about neutralizing negativity. You cannot help but smile back. So the best defense is a good offense. Just keep smiling, right? So the takeaway here is you influence your environment and your relationships more than you imagine. All right. So <clears throat> let's move on with some new material now that we've reviewed. Oops, go back, please. Thank you, engineering. All right. Let's look at Dr. Bruce Lipton here, whose picture we see. 
along with his book called The Biology of Belief. Dr. Lipton worked as a cell biologist at St. George's University at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine. And he made an astounding discovery that scientifically proved how our mood, positive and negative, affects and changes our DNA and our RNA in terms of telomerase. I'm going to explain that in a minute. So a positive attitude and a sense of purpose and love determine one's energy longevity, not genetics. So on the ends of the chromosomes, there are these structures called telomeres. And when the cell replicates, it transfers this genetic material from the old cell to the new cell. Well, when the cell replicates these ends of the telomeres, they can be shorter or longer. And what determines if they're shorter or longer is a person's sense of purpose, love, and a positive attitude. Imagine that. Now, how can that be? What about genetics? Well, I guess you can program your DNA and RNA according to Dr. Lipton. Because when the cell divides, it's this enzyme called telomerase that determines the length of the telomere. And the longer the telomere, the slower the aging process will be in the human body. And the shorter the telomere with negative thinking, a sense of defeatedness and futility and depression, the shorter the telomere will be and therefore will accelerate the aging process. How about that? Another thing that Dr. Uh, Lipton discussed was this um, concept of ikigai. That's that little word there, ikigai. It's a Japanese word. Let's learn more about that. So ikigai contributes to longevity. Ikigai is a reason for being, the thing that gets you up in the morning, your motivation for living, your purpose, your mission in life your passion, what you love to do, your special place in this world. So Ikigai contributes to longevity. It's also a protective factor against depression. It gives us a sense of connection, mission, purpose, and worth. Now, how does Ikigai affect our longevity besides the, tel the telomeres? Let's find out more about blue zones. There are five blue zones in the world. Why are they called blue? Because when researchers first started investigating, why do people in certain areas live not only in years to be centenarians or longer, uh, meaning they live to be 100 years old or more, not only in years, but also in health, vibrant health and quality of life. And they circled these areas with a blue marker. That's why they call them blue zones. So we have only one in the United States, which is in Loma Linda, California, uh, where there is a lot of Seventh-day Adventists and they have a healthy diet. Uh, there's one in Costa Rica. There's one in Sardinia, Italy in Greece and Okinawa, Japan. So Ikigai is one of these nine lifestyle factors that contributes to longevity in these blue zones. So the, uh, let's see, what is their commonality? So according to the researchers, one of whom was Dan Butner and his colleagues, they came up with about nine common factors, including this Ikigai. Positive thinking, a sense of purpose, a healthy diet, they had good social support, 
They had a reason for living. Some of them were even working in over a hundred. So maybe uh, I would like to hear from you, not maybe, I would like to hear from you of uh, either calling in or uh, writing to us in the chat or after the live show, feel free to share what is your Ikigai? Say that 10 times real fast. Ikigai, Ikigai. So my Ikigai is spreading love, light, and wisdom, healing, inspiring, health, making someone's day brighter and lighter, and leaving people and clients in a better place than in which I found them. That's what makes my day. That is my, or those are some of my ikigai, my reasons for getting up in the morning. What are yours? All right, let us know. Another way that we are more powerful than we think, or our thoughts are more power than we powerful than we imagine is this book that came out in 2006 by Rhonda Byrne called The Secret. It's also a movie, a documentary, and it features top name healers and professionals discussing the power of positive thinking and its influence on health. Now, I saw this uh, video, I guess you could call it, DVD, whatever, uh, a number of years ago, and there's one scene that I remember, still remember to this day. There was a man from the southern United States, southwest United States, who was unfortunately injured in a rodeo accident. He was thrown from the bull, and he ended up in the hospital, and he was paralyzed from the neck down. The doctors told him he would never walk again. So he figured while he's in the hospital and he has um, nothing else to do, he could either accept this grim diagnosis or he could use his time and imagine his body being healthy. Now, this was a very foreign concept to him, but little bit by little bit, he regained use of his limbs and four years later, he walked unassisted out the front door of the hospital against all medical odds. So if he can do it, you can too. You are more powerful than you know. All right, let's learn some more about energy. So remember that morphogenetic field? You feel somebody thinking about you or and you turn around, uh, Hopefully there's somebody there <laughs> or somebody safe or you're thinking about someone and within a day or two, that person calls you, sends you an email, has some kind of contact with you. Like, ah, it's just thinking about you. So how are you picking that up through the morphogenetic field? You have this little antenna called the vagus nerve. The nerve is inside your body but it extends, its field extends outside the body. And this is where intuition and spirit meet your physical anatomy. The vagus nerve goes through all the way through the back and the front through our major organs. It connects the brain and our organs and with our intuition. It also picks up stress or de-stress responses. So when we say, I have a gut feeling about that, that's really your intuition because your gut is known as your second brain. So how do those neural impulses translate into intuition or the intuition translate into those neural impulses? It's through your vagus nerve. So, this is also part of the parasympathetic nervous system, which is involved in relaxing, such as meditation or relaxing after you eat a meal. It can be stimulated by singing, humming, or letting the shower water hit the back of your neck. 
and it will hopefully um, stimulate the uh, vagus nerve and help you relax. That's part of the polyvagal theory. All right. Let's now go on and talk about the human aura, the energy field, the bioenergetic field. This is a page from Cindy Dale's book, Energetic Boundaries. And you see here these concentric shapes. Those are the 12 auric layers, the 12 layers of the energy field around the human body. And each layer is a different aspect. Some are related to spirit. Some are related to your physical body. Some are related to your relationships, your heart center. And each one of these is influenced by your thoughts and feelings. When a person is ill, God forbid, it starts actually in the spirit field, way out there, and comes slowly, 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 slowly into the body. Yes, there are diseases, bacteria, viruses, and so forth, but somewhere also in our thinking, according to metaphysical causes for maladies, it's out there already. There's some disturbance in our energy field, whether that's from our thinking, feeling, or we're picking up stuff that's going on in the universe. And when we heal, first we have to heal our physical body, and then it goes outward into our energetic body. So these are some of the ways that the aura must be strong. We can't. These are some of the ways in which our aura affects our health, our mental and physical health. And that's why it's important to be as much as we can in a positive state of mind. Let's look at these slides, which are taken from a YouTube video. Um, Dr. Valerie Hunt, who was a NASA scientist and UCLA professor and researcher in 1996, was the first person to capture the aura on camera. That is the bioenergetic field. So you see here on the left, there's look a little fuzziness around the, the person's body. That's the bioenergetic field, the aura. And this person is eating healthy food, fruits and nuts and whatever. We don't know exactly, but what we can see is that the aura has a field around the body, a wider field than the picture on the left, on the right side. There are candy bars, there's a can of soda, which is full of sugar and chemicals and chemical food coloring and who knows what else. And look how much smaller the energy field is around the body. So what you eat also affects your aura. Let's look at another scientist, Dr. Zvulun Revayev, who was born in Russia and um, worked in Israel. Uh, the side, slide before that, please, thank you. So this uh, slide on the left, is a woman with her child and they are oming. Look how brilliant and how wide and vibrant that energy field is. And also look at how the mother's energy field is wrapped around the child who's sitting to her right. The slide on the left demonstrates um, I'm sorry, uh, I back up. This is also from Dr. Valerie Hunt, my mistake. Sorry about that. Um, the figure on the right is at the beach. So when you go to the beach and you feel more relaxed, maybe it's from the negative ions as well as your aura is bigger and stronger. Okay, now we're going to go to uh, something really cool here by Dr. Zavulun Ravayev, an Israeli scientist and bioenergetic researcher. This is on the left side, an aura um, is taken with this aura camera, 
He is the uh, chief rabbi of the city of Tzfat up in the north of Israel. This is his normal, normal aura. And then we asked him immediately to say a, a Devar Torah. That means he is talking words of Torah, the words of the Bible. And immediately look at the difference, what, how the aura changed. You see now it's more purple above his head his crown chakra, which is connected to the creator. Isn't that cool? Okay. So we see here that having a spiritual practice definitely influences the auric field. I also have an aura. Let me show you that. Next slide, please. Oops. This is before and after healing. You see the changes in the color and you see this field disturbance that was above my head, that gray, that's a field disturbance. And it was released with the healing. And there's another slide with um, before and after healing. You see there's like a gray field around the slide on the left. And after healing, this is just with tones how the aura is the change of colors and it's smoother and it's wider. How about that? Okay, so I think that we're going to have a commercial break now. And this is Shoshana Averbach with you live on Bull Braid TV and you're watching Love, Light, and wisdom and we're going to talk more about the energy field when we come back from this commercial break see you in a few master of words powerful player what life-changing words can dr janet smith warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there a door to free yourself from fear forever transform your rage into right action release your guilt position you into a life of freedom purpose passion power and peace all quite suddenly unexpectedly and almost miraculously with no effort on your part join dr janet every monday at noon eastern on dancing with words dancing with wisdom on the bbm global network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles opens your mind and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Love, Light, and Wisdom. I'm Shoshana Averbach, your hostess, and you're watching us live on Bold Brave TV. So now I'd like you to see some more really cool things about the aura. This is from a book by Barbara Brennan, who is an energy healer and has worked a lot with the aura and also has a training program. I did not take the training program, but I read parts of her book. And you can see the energy fields around people who are feeling positive feelings versus negative feelings. I'd like to call your attention to the difference in colors and the width of the aura. And especially this one on the bottom right, where it's like a little balloon. Those are your thoughts that 
negative thoughts projecting towards someone else. It is really impacting someone else's energy field. And that's why it's important to keep your own aura strong so that you stay healthy and unaffected as much as possible. So let's now take a look at another slide from Barbara Brennan's book. This is how she saw different shapes of the aura. Uh, for example, porcupine, or look how irregular these shapes are. I want to call your attention to this one with the uh, red circle, how people hook each other, not only with thinking, but with their energy fields, like two bowls, right? When they're thinking negative thoughts, when they're engaged in some kind of negative encounter. So the point here is what are we encountering and what are we exuding into the universe and to other people? And how do toxic energies and emotions affect us? So we can hook each up, we can hook other people unknowingly or purposely or let ourselves be hooked. So how do we deal with this? Let's take a look at the next slide, please. We put up boundaries. That's what a boundary is, a fence. I allow certain things in and I keep certain things out according to my discretion. This is also important in the energy field because we want to let in only positive energies, hopefully, and keep out other energies. We want to prevent leaks and tears so that, again, that will not come into our physical body. So a person is vulnerable energetically when the aura is weak. That leaves us vulnerable not only to physical maladies, but also emotional states. So when we have a strong aura, we have a stronger sense of self. This is where I begin and end, and this is where you begin and end. Like good fences make good neighbors. So this is also a way of respecting ourselves. This is what I will accept. This is not, this is what I will not accept. So let's take a look at what happens when our energy field is depleted. Um, or how can we make it strong? Okay, well, beware of too much emotional involvement. And when you feel your energy plummeting for no reason, or maybe is, you stop. Take a deep breath and disconnect, right? It's like, oh, why did I, you know, when I left that client, I left that phone call, why is my energy all of a sudden, right? Disconnect yourself and stop and recenter yourself, strengthen your aura. Stay detached with love, even when you're having uncomfortable encounters that you cannot exit stage right from. And when our energetic boundaries are weak, we are vulnerable, again, to physical, emotional, and spiritual influences and absorbing other people's stuff that we don't want. When they are strong, we maintain what is healthy and resonant for our truth. So how do we do that? Let's take a look. Well, first of all, would you let your cell phone get battery get down to nothing? So we must also take care of our own energy. How do we do that? Okay, here are some ways to protect your aura. First of all, start your day before work or whatever you do with an intention and protection practice. Just even like, God, please help me stay healthy and happy and protect my comings and bless my, protect my comings and goings. It can be that simple. Disconnect your energy after each client encounter, if you're working in the energy field or mental health field or wherever work situation you're is, before you start your day and at the end of the day before you come home from work. So you're not bringing that home with you from work. Verbally disconnect with love and light and gratitude from your heart like this and your solar plexus chakra. Just simply put your hand over your solar plexus, take a deep breath in and, and release. 
to the love and light. Maybe just verbally set your intentions. I am setting my energetic boundaries. Make sure you stay hydrated and eat healthy food, especially protein for grounding. Let's look at some more ways to protect your aura. <clears throat> you can go on this website from Dr. Karen Kant, who's a medical doctor turned energy healer. And these are some wonderful free resources. Um, I also recommend showering, cleaning off your aura, washing your hands, just put some water over them, shake off the energy if you're not around a place where you can wash your hands. Uh, Twisted Sage is also has some wonderful energy, energy tools, anti EMF tools for cell phones and computers. Magnets strengthen uh, your aura as do shungite and hematite crystals. I also have a uh, I wear a shungite bracelet. Singing. Oh! strengthens your aura and vibrates all your bones and organs and also positive thinking. Let's take a look at just a few more things to leave you with and you can also watch them on the replay. You can use the shift and shine technique and connect with your heart. Start your day with uh, now I'm going to have the best day ever or the best day possible even if you're going through some challenges. Be sure to stay hydrated, wear some, consider wearing some crystals, and also remember to clean them, except for selenite. Nutrition is very important to keep our energy up. Do I need to eat? Oh my goodness, I'm so hungry. I didn't eat lunch yet. I didn't eat this. All right. Nuts and seeds, baby carrots, protein bars without sugar are some good finger foods. Yes, you can sit at your desk and be productive and take care of yourself, very important, as well as sleep hygiene. And let's take a look at some more. Uh, make sure that you are as free as possible from EMFs, which eat away at your auric field. Make sure to stay uh, in self-care as much as possible to balance the challenges that we go through. And of course, um, rule out medical causes and just disconnect. Okay, so I want to thank you for joining us today. And we'll be back next Monday, God willing, at 10 o'clock Eastern time with some more ways to help you keep your aura and energy strong. We'll be discussing more about aura, the energy, and healing and tips to help you have a healthy, happy life. If you have any questions or comments about today's show, please write to boldbravetv.com. You've been watching me, Shoshana Averbach, on Love, Light, and Wisdom on Bold Brave TV. And I look forward to seeing you on Monday next week, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Remember to visit me at healingnotes.com and I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe and like on whichever platform you're watching today. Let's give a big thumbs up for our engineering team and the staff at Bold Brave TV and I bless you. Have a happy, healthy, normal enough, safe, successful, lucrative, peaceful, creative, loving day and week. Shalom and blessings. This has been Love, Light, and Wisdom with your host, Shoshana. Shoshana's proven approach takes the guesswork out of healing with user-friendly techniques that resonate deeply with her clients. Tune in to Love, Light, and Wisdom Mondays at 10 a.m. Eastern to hear Shoshana discuss her techniques and learn how to apply them in your own life. Be you. Be happy. Believe. Music X